In today's video, we're going to be exploring the depths of Roblox scripting once again. You guys seem to really enjoy the last video, uh, so here is another one. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, I'm going to be going over random, uh, more unknown functions in Roblox Studio scripting that you guys probably don't hear every day, so let's get right into it. And so the first thing we have is the UTFA library. Now basically what this does is this library uh, gives us functions that helps us um, encode and decode text um, because uh, text like different uh, languages and emojis and stuff like that have their different code points and we can use this to identify those and help basically uh, you know just correctly translate those. So games that aim to support multiple languages, uh, the UTF-8 library may be useful in doing that to handle the text uh, in different uh, languages, like in different scripts and stuff like that, uh, especially characters in like uh, that are from non-Latin like languages and scripts like uh, Chinese, Japanese, Arabic and stuff like that. Furthermore, if you guys like have something where you can insert text, this library may be useful to translate that and encode it uh, so that it is compatible with multiple languages uh, with those code points that I mentioned. For example, uh, let's say we have a string from a different language like text, and let me get this real quick, is equal to this. And then I have length, and this is going to use UTF-8 dot len length and I'm gonna put in here text we're gonna print length now this basically just prints uh, the number of characters in a string but it also takes into the account that a certain symbol in another language may be more than just like one character it might be multi byte as they call it because I know there's some languages where one thing could mean multiple words sentences you know stuff like that this takes into that case because if you just say print then it would just say oh well this is maybe nine uh, but some of these other characters could mean more than one thing i'm not going to cover all of them but i have one more and this is utf8 dot uh car character not character but it's it looks like this and basically this function creates a string from the uh, unicode code points that we give it. So as I mentioned earlier, different languages and stuff like emojis have their own Unicode point things. And so basically this is how we can translate it so that uh, you know we can see it on across multiple languages and stuff like that. I'm not exactly sure how you get these code points, but we can say local text is equal to utf8. Dot uh, the function as I mentioned in here I'm going to put in these code points now these code points mention different characters across different languages I'm not exactly sure how you would get these but you know maybe if you search them up you can see uh, what different code points mean for different emojis and stuff like that and then we are going to print what we have here and see what it gives us so we're gonna click run and it gives us this language so uh, this code point represents this part of I don't even know what language I don't, I don't want to be stereotypical or anything, but this other code point that we put in here uh, resembles this one, as you guys can see here. And now the next thing I have for you guys is something called settings. And uh, what settings does for us is it returns us a global settings object. And this contains the different various configurations in the Roblox game engine. For example, the color of nil for example uh, we can configure I, I keep typing the same thing if uh, you can get this because uh, if you go up to file studio settings and check the coding uh, there's different colors and stuff and we can get these uh, Roblox engine configurations mind you this is mainly for plugins and stuff like that so I'm going to say local s is for example equals settings and if we press s we have all these different things that have to do with like the actual game engine stuff so rendering physics all that different stuff uh, for example if we uh, click studio and then dot and we go down for example there's our nil color and you know tab with bull color error color all those different like scripting color stuffs and there's a whole bunch of other stuff but you guys get what I mean 
we can also check the render settings render settings so we can say settings dot rendering and down here we could say something like print render settings dot quality level and this would give us the quality mind you when you're trying to print this the current thread cannot be called settings uh, lacking capability plugin so I think uh, for the majority of these these are used in plugins to maybe benchmark different internal stuff uh, that you would want to do by using plugins the next one I have for you guys is something called new proxy and basically what this does is it creates a new user data object uh, so this is for people that want to create like I don't know different objects that have their own meta tables because you can attach meta tables uh, to it and it basically this allows you to create uh, unique user data objects and that can be used as keys uh, in tables for data saving different stuff like that we can also attaching uh, we can also attach meta tables so this basically gives us uh, an opportunity to basically add custom behavior to it as well I'm going to give you guys two code pieces, one creating a simple user data object and also using new proxy to create unique keys. So this first example, I'm going to say local object is equal to new proxy and then true. True means that the user uh, data will attach, we will attach a meta table to it. And we're going to say local meta table is equal to get meta table and then object and we're going to say meta dot underscore underscore index is equal to meta table there we go oh i said meta i i, I like to shorten stuff up but uh if you guys don't know uh what this is doing here it's more meta table stuff there's a meta method i'll get into uh it in here just a little bit but i'm gonna say function meta table uh dot or colon maybe something like hello i don't know something random i'm gonna say print hello and i'm gonna say uh, object hello just like this and so if you were to print this this gives us hello as we said here now basically what's going on here is when we call this hello we are checking for hello in our meta table but we don't find it so this underscore underscore index goes back in uh, you know it sees that we don't have this and since meta tables are powerful we will then attach it here and it doesn't error for us so that's one of the code examples that I have for you guys the second one is uh, using new proxy to create unique keys so I'm gonna say like uh, key one is equal to new proxy and maybe let's just make a second one we'll call key two is equal to new proxy and then I'm going to say local like my table or something like something weird like, <laughs> like that and I'm gonna say my table square brackets uh, unique oh it's yeah key one is equal to uh, value for key one and then my table square brackets key two is equal to value for key two I know very original and then we're going to print these two so my table uh, square brackets key one and then do the same for key two it's like this print this and we'll say value for key one value for key two now this next function is called yp call I don't really know why I add it to this list it's pretty useless so basically the regular p call protected call then used to yield so this was called yielding protected call but now you know it's deprecated now as we can see here and now p call actually yields manually without having to call this so this is basically useless you know not really much of a point of using this but y p call yields it basically the same thing as p call but i guess older so i guess there you guys go and now the last one I have for you guys is something called get fenv or also known as get function environment. And basically this is used to retrieve the environment of a function uh, or you can say the environment of which a code of piece is being run under.
uh, and this environment is basically a table that holds the variables and functions accessible to that code. So let's actually use this. I once again have two code pieces for you guys. So I'm gonna say local function. I'm just gonna call this example because it's an example. I'm gonna say local environment is equal to get environment, a function environment, and I'm going to print it. And then in here, I'm gonna say call example. So this will give us uh, basically the current environment of this function. And this will give us many different things. So if you run this, we have a table which contains all the things that uh, can run in this environment. There's underscore G, we, are, we all maybe know what that is. There's script, and there's also shared. Um, so we have this in a local function, right? Let's say we took, got rid of the local, so it's not just local to the script. Well, this will give us more things. Uh, well, I thought well, maybe one of these, was, yeah, example. I, I forgot which one was new already, but... Uh, local has something to do with it too, with it just being local to the script here. And so get function environment returns the environment, which is a table uh, that code can run under. All right, so let's say local function, just example again. And we're going to say print something like uh, bar, something just random. And see, we don't have it there. But just wait, we're going to create a new environment, a table, and this bar will be equal to, let's say, new environment. And then we can say set uh, function environment, which is, you know, I'm adding something to it. And I'm going to say example, and then new environment. And then I'm going to call example. And what this will give us... All right, now that I'm looking at this, guys, I actually think I have to change this. So what I have to do here is then actually get the environment. So environment is equal to get in, uh, environment and then of uh, the example. And then I need to do something down here, which is, you know, have it to a meta table. So we are going to say set meta table and then, then create the table and say bar is equal to new environment. Pretty sure I spelled that right. Let me see. All right. And then outside of here, we're going to say comma, uh, squarely brackets, once again, underscore, underscore index is equal to environment. And now this should actually work. Once again, bar is not defined at all. So it's going to go back and then set it, the environment, and then it should print us new environment. Run that code. And as we can see, we get new environment. And yeah, guys, this was today's video. If you guys did learn something from this video or you guys enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and the subscribe button. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.